Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Gaming Weekly. Today we've got Fallout 76 Road to Launch coverage, Oh the Kills the Walking Dead, and Tetris Effect. One is bad, one is good, the other is ugly. Place your bets now and get ready to call into our hotline with your answers. That's right, we got Omo backstage working the switchboard. Why don't you tell him what they'll win, Omo? I think he... Actually, oh, he, does, he can't see the script. Omar can't he see the script. Know. He doesn't no, know. I, I meant to I, warn you, yeah, we were going to throw to you without any kind of prompting. So he, he doesn't know. He doesn't have a switchboard. He doesn't have a, a microphone or a camera. Excellent. So the contest is canceled. Just like some Fallout 76 free orders after this week. Zing! <laughs> you, you got him, Moana? Why'd you do that? Uh, yeah, the Fallout 76 has been going through some shit. To get you up to speed before the game comes out, we thought we'd wade right through that shit and bring you with us. Why would we do that? That's really mean. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Bethesda <laughs> announced Fallout 76 back in May with one of the the weirdest live streams we've ever seen. Are you talking about the E3 one, Lawrence? No, 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 no. This no. was uh, this was on Twitch. It oh. was just like 24 hours of an empty room with a vault boy laying down. There's like a TV in the background. People come out to like play with action figures. I think Pete Hines came out and had himself a little drinky. Poo. I don't think I watched any of that. They, they got like, um, I think it was 2 million views total. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it was nothing. <laughs> Okay, well, accordingly, Fallout 76 also has one of the most unusual receptions to a Bethesda game in a pretty long time. People that played it in one of the several open beta sessions are calling it a mess. Combat Oof. is jarring, especially Yikes. without bats, and pit boys don't function as they should when everything's online. So who doesn't love being stuck in a menu while someone else is shooting at you? <laughs> Sounds like an awkward match. The Fallout series has a lot of pausing, if you it think does. about it. It does, yeah, it really does. Things. Yeah, pit boy, and then you got the bats. Bats, so. yeah. So moving all of that to a multiplayer setting on the same engine, it looks like it's causing issues. Yeah, one common complaint is the world feels empty because instead of a quirky roster of NPCs, you instead get MAGA Cum Lord hopping around. That takes a pretty big chomp out of the old Fallout atmosphere. <laughs> Other players are there, sure, but they're all doing the same largely single-player structured quest that you are, meaning they don't serve any purpose other than to just slow you down. Cool. If you die, you don't even lose anything, so it doesn't have the tension of Daisy or Rust. You just respawn. I don't know if I like that or not. Uh, just like life itself, somehow it gets worse beyond having no point in the first place. <laughs> Jeez, man, this is really sad. I was so, in a dark place last night. Yeah, I know, I, man. Uh, so far, we've run down the concerns with the game's mechanics, but there are a bunch of technical problems, too. First, the Brotherhood of Steel's cannon was messed up. Lawrence, what's going on. How dare they? <laughs> My Brotherhood of Steel are very important. So, okay, here's the deal. Fallout 76 takes place in West Virginia in the year 2102. That's almost 50 years before the Brotherhood of Steel would have even thought about leaving California, where they originated. Yeah. And a different side of the country. Yeah, that's yes. a, a long, long journey. journey. Yeah, mm -hmm. long journey. Yeah. Fans came out and said this is virtually impossible, and Pete Hines said that uh, while they do take lore seriously, they won't be, quote, beholden to something that somebody wrote 20 years ago, even in franchises that we created, like the Elder Scrolls. Oh, wow. Uh, they later updated the lore to say that soldiers who would end up forming the Brotherhood of Steel used a functioning satellite to extend their reach across America. Okay. People seem to buy it. I mean, what's the point of getting hung up on, like, that minutia of lore for a series that's this old and is also migrated developers a couple times. Yeah. I kind of get why people care because Fallout lore is really cool. It is really cool. That when yeah. you like screw up with the timeline, it makes it less cool. Yeah, but that does, you're right. I would agree. They tried to fix it. So. But then Bethesda released a statement on Twitter on October 22nd warning everyone about the game. <laughs> Seems like a scary thing when warning a company them. is there saying, heads up, you got some hot trash on the way. <laughs> That's not good. When they're telling people their game is garbage. Did they really say this, Lawrence? I mean, they were more diplomatic about it, but ki kind of, yeah, they did. Uh, so it's weird. The letter opens with some vague description about how much they've invested into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, four studios working for three years each. Wow. Uh, and then they basically say, it's up to you to figure out what this is. What? what? So, yeah, weird, right? Like, I, the way it's written, I think they wanted it to sound like, we're giving you this magical realm to play and craft and make your own. Yeah. But. Ugh, after, after like some of the beta stuff, it sounds a lot more like we spent a shitload of money on this, it's time to put it out there, you guys figure it out. <laughs> and it gets worse, the letter goes on to say you should expect to encounter, quote, all new spectacular issues none of us have ever encountered. So we're, ba we're basically beta testing, we're QAing for them. That's the most Bethesda shit they ever could have said. Yeah. <laughs> Feature or bug, why not both? <laughs> so they spent tons of money, don't know what it is, but at least did us the courtesy of knowing that it's also busted. Question mark? Uh, pretty much. Okay. They should have sent a poet. <laughs> so that gets us up to beta territory in the Fallout 76 timeline. Around October 30, the first such spectacular issue showed up in the form of a bug that manages to delete the entire game. That's right. 50 gigabytes gone by pressing literally any button in the launch client. I don't even understand how that happens. <laughs> it sounds like a prank. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does. Uh, then the hack starts showing up, or at the very least, the vulnerabilities. Reddit user Teeth are just done did some digging through the client files and posted a Reddit thread on November 4th claiming that there weren't any server checks to verify files or models 
Lawrence, what are some of the major issues there? Potentially the absolute worst thing you could ever imagine for a multiplayer What are game. you talking about? What's that? Well, it's hard to say. Teeth are just done make some very scary claims here. Essentially, they're saying that the servers in Fallout 76, that's what all the clients, individual players connect to, yeah. doesn't verify the files on the client side before they start playing, Oof. and doesn't even verify the data that's being transmitted to the server. What does it do? <laughs> <laughs> what does the server do then? Uh, well, it just it just uh, synchronizes everybody's inputs. So wow. it makes sure that everybody's like playing at the same time. If you kill something, it sends that message to somebody else's client. Okay. But if it's not checking any of that data or making sure that it's integrated, you can just open up, theoretically, you can open up an editor on your side of the game, delete a wall and walk right through it. Yeah. And then since the client's telling the server, I'm through the wall now, the server's just like, okay. <laughs> And it gets worse. They go on to say that network traffic itself isn't even encrypted, hmm. meaning that you can not only see the network addresses of everyone you're playing with on the server, but also interfere with their traffic too. Yikes. So if somebody's <laughs> pissing you off, you can just spoof a packet from the server, send it to another client saying you are disconnected and they get bombed out of the game. Cool. Uh, yeah, you can basically be somebody's <laughs> terrible, terrible god. Well, Man. that's that's pretty bad. That's really, really bad. It sounds like it's weird because they obviously have been developing single player games for a very long time, but it's like they're just learning <laughs> online games. Same engine. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I don't buy it. I think that's a little extreme. If it really were that easy, if it were as bad as Teeth or Just Done makes it out to be, it'd be much much worse than the beta is. It's just kind of a clunky beta right now, but yeah. this would be like Bethesda's getting sued and becomes a smoking crater worse. Yeah, yeah. Like trapped in an Uber with Logan Paul worse. Chipotle shutting down worse, Lawrence? Exactly. What? Well, That's impossible. We know some of this was legit uh, because just a few days after on November 5th, Bethesda said, the community has called attention to several issues that our teams are already actively tracking and planning to roll out fixes for. Great job. Uh, most recently, the beta got a 30 gigabyte patch to fix several performance issues, which you can then delete by pressing one button, uh, plus some quest <laughs> UI, art updates, bigger stash sizes, and push to talk. No FLV sliders though, which was another hotly requested feature. That's real neat, but this close to launch, there just shouldn't be this many issues. Not there are all. some significant updates rolling in, and we're expecting the players who jump into Fallout 76 when it launches on November 14th are kind of going to continue feeling like beta testers uh -huh. if the people who played the beta are still interested. Uh, hey, let us know what you guys think. Uh, has Fallout 76's rocky lead up l turned you off from the game at all? Because it turned me off a little bit. I was really excited to jump into that beta and then it sounded like everybody was having problems and I was like, I'll wait. <laughs> I'm still gonna play it, but I think the way that they're talking about it makes it sound like, hey, this isn't a Call Bethesda game. It's not gonna be Skyrim good. Sure. They're just wanting everyone. So if you go in with those expectations, should be all right. Low expectations and you never get disappointed. Yeah, on to something more positive. Lawrence, you've been playing Tetris Effect. Whoa. I have. Have you not been able to tell by my transcendent aura? No. No. Are you sure? No, yeah, nothing's nice. different about you. No, my chakras, they're Literally like nothing. wide open. Talk about Tetris. All right, hey, uh, yeah, we got to play Tetris Effect. By we, I mean I, because I love Tetris, <laughs> I guess to set it up. Mm -hmm. But hey, guess what? Tetris Effect is it, it, fucking Tetris, man. You like, you rotate the blocks, you drop them. Uh, if you're familiar with Tetsuya Mizuguchi, uh, you have a good idea of what to expect here. This is a guy who made Res, Lumines, uh, Meteos. Tetris Effect is actually super similar to Lumines. Uh, each stage that you play in puts a different visual skin on the Tetrominoes. That's what we in the biz call the little Tetris block. Let's, let's you're not, on, you're not cool. Oh, let's see it on three. I was, <laughs> so, one, uh, two, three. You're, you're not, not cool. cool. What? But you know, it's just a little industry term. We at Tetris Pros, we talk about it. We get together and we talk and we hang out. Anyway, there's a bunch of trippy <laughs> shit in the background. Uh, your moves are all quantized to the song playing in the background, so kind of like Luminous, whenever you spin a block or move it or drop it or clear a line, that sound effect is matched up with the beat of the background track. So, you know, you end up making your little percussive drum breaks and glitchy stuff. Cool. And yeah, the faster you play and the better you get at it, the crunchier your beats get. You gonna DJ my wedding? <laughs> oh, and just give me a power outlet, a PS4, and a couple of Four Locos, and I'll play all night. Can you fire someone before you hire them? No, you can't. We have a contract now, verbal contract. You guys got that. We don't have any that. verbal contract. 20 bucks and a four loco, that's cool. I like watermelon. Anyway, uh, so unlike Luminous, uh, every stage has three levels of intensity that you go through, uh, scaled out over how many lines you need to clear. Uh, hitting those moments where you like clear a big line or make a big move and then it just makes this huge EDM drop or just like this giant choral euphoric blast of sound, it, it fucking works, man. It feels really good. Well, how's the Tetris-y part of it? I'm glad you asked. I'm that asshole who actually doesn't like a Tetris game if the Tetris rules aren't implemented well, oh but this one's super gosh. simple. So yeah, you think the Tetris is just Tetris, but it's not. You can have <laughs> shitty Tetris. 
Uh, this is actually a really good Tetris. Beyond Tetris itself, what does this game have in it? There's an adventure mode where you just play through all the stages in order. It's not meant to be like a 60 hour Red Dead 2 experience. You're meant to play through it multiple times. I'm gonna play Try and bash your way up the leaderboards. Just, we'll just play Red Dead. How many horses can I own? <laughs> Wait, I think there might actually be horses in Tetris. <gasps> Sold! The music is kinda, it's eclectic, but all of it's good. It's actually marks, the music itself is a few leaps better than what you heard in like Tetris or Res or anything like that. You got that. some Tetris for me, boy? <laughs> well, I got all the Tetris for you, Jacob. So aside from bashing your way up the leaderboard, Tetris Effect also has modes designed to acknowledge and encourage ongoing play, the kind of thing where you just sit down, play a few rounds, and move on with your life. So there's a weekly ritual that you can uh, participate in. It unlocks avatars and stuff for players if people contribute enough points. Uh, why does that matter, you ask? Avatars? Well, there's a mode where you get to see everyone's avatars swimming around the planet Earth in this giant celestial aquarium thing. <laughs> I like that. I mean, it sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, this game, that's what this game is. It's like new age vibes. Just new like, age vibes, man. Exactly. Right. Neat. I mean, they really did try to add as many modes as they could beyond just, you know, clear all them blocks. Uh, that's cool. You know, it's got all the classics. Yeah. Oh, are you yawning? What is this? Yeah, I just <laughs> yawned. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's great. Sorry, go ahead. There are modes where it'll drop like uh, the eye, eye pieces down at specific points in the board in a certain number of turns. So you have to set up a Tetris and then the block will drop down. They also have stress-free no game over modes in case uh, once the game really ratchets up in difficulty, it gets your heart pumping. If you want to just chill out or maybe you're in an altered mental state. Yeah, and just I knew that's where we were going with I this. See. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe. Hey! To kids, stay in school, but also Tetris Effect. <laughs> just he just said stay school. in school, do drugs, but make stay sure in stay in school. Uh, but they, yeah, they have modes where it just, there's no Tetris actually. You just mash buttons and it makes sparkles and jigglies happen. Is, right. there, is there anything missing or anything you don't like about it? It's hard to say. So they don't have multiplayer. Competitive Tetris has been a thing in the past, sort of thing where you clear lines, you get powers, you fire them at your enemy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's not in the game. <laughs> That'd be neat if it were, but honestly, I'm not, I'm not so much a fan of that as I am just challenging myself and trying to get better at the game. So that doesn't bother me too much. Aside from that, it's hard to imagine anything else they could have added, you know? Uh, more stages, multiplayer, those things can potentially be added through DLC. Honestly, at the end of it, <laughs> what? Jacob, Jacob yawning now? Jacob. Come on. You guys. <laughs> Ultimately, if you've ever played Tetris, uh, or if you like sparkly colors, and I know a lot of you do, this, you should let this game blow your mind for a little bit. I think, I think it's worth it. Then again, I already said I'm already a Tetris nut. It also has VR support and uh, runs 4K 60 FPS with HDR oh. if you have a PS4 Pro, so. Hold on, I have the most important question. What's How up? many times have you jerked off to this game while playing it? Oh uh, boy, my hands are busy playing this game. You can't, oh, you can't get these, these surgeon's tools doing anything other than clearing those blocks. Well, so he jerked off to the game after the game was done. Yeah. You gotta get your heart rate down somehow. Let me guess, do you give it a 10 out of 10? Uh, no. <laughs> no, we don't do scores here. What do you give it? That's it, no. Seven blocks? Three? Which it's block do you give it? Long, oh. The long mm. block or the L block or the S block? I like the S block. Who likes the S block? I hate that S block. I mean, Wait, the square one? block is the obvious choice. This is the square. You're gonna give it a square? No, square is also a pain in the ass. Uh, I'm gonna give it the T block. All right, contrarian. And it goes everywhere. That's not the only review we have this week, though. Yeah, you might have heard of Overkill's The Walking Dead. Yeah, it's a Left 4 Dead-style co-op zombie shooter developed by Overkill Software, who also made Payday. Oh, great. It was announced back in 2014, four years ago, and was originally supposed to come out in 2016. Got it. The first ever gameplay footage showed up at E3 this year, 2018, mm -hmm. and the company has released a handful of cinematic trailers, all of which make it look kind of awesome, as if, like, Left 4 Dead and made by the same team as Payday 2 wasn't enough to sell me on it. Unfortunately, it falls short in the most bizarre ways, which is especially bad because it costs 60 bucks. Oh, it costs $60. Yeah. Holy shit. I think Payday was cheaper than that, right? Wasn't it when it came yeah. out? Yeah. First up, it's got a wave-based defense mode that absolutely nobody asked for. You board up your gates, zombies break in, you fix the gates, zombies break in. You have to manage running between ammo boxes, getting plans to fix gates, and dropping some relatively useless barbed wire traps so you can board up more gates. <laughs> Plus, getting headshots or solid melee hits wouldn't even necessarily kill the zombies either. So just between boarding up gates, you're spamming left mouse click, and zombies seem totally fine. Cool. And sure, there are some bugs and glitches, but it's mostly just really dull. Oh, well, that doesn't sound fun. Uh, the second mode might be even worse. Uh, it's similar, but with an onslaught of human AI, which is pretty bad, who are just trying to steal your shit. So if Alana wanted that, she just stayed in San Francisco. That's what people do. That's true. <laughs> The actual Left 4 Dead style mode is a little better. It mostly involves finding supplies. You need to power up a generator or a forklift to progress, even though there's some dumbass video game logic that's like, well, but you need four entire gas tanks to drive a forklift one centimeter, which is 
very annoying. And all of the gas happens to be scattered around in separate canisters in the surrounding area. Perfect. Just for whatever reason. Yeah, the game also <laughs> adds in stealth mechanics, which work for the most part, except when it's over punishing. Alana, you wish it had either stuck to just one formula and refined it or added a whole different take, right? Yeah, like how Dead Rising got kind of crazier with weapons yeah. or Dying Light added parkour. They had something else involved. Right. Uh, we, we actually did reach out to the team for official comment, but I'd guess this one just had a really messy development cycle. Like we said off the top, this game got delayed for two whole years thanks to a few different circumstances. The first delay, funnily enough, came because Starbreeze, who published the game, received a $40 million investment from a Korean publisher and got pushed to make a co-op shooter in the Crossfire universe. It's basically Counter-Strike, but in China and super popular. Hey, I'm really proud of all of us for not doing an offensive Chinese accent. Good job, everyone. We never do that. No. Lawrence? What? Nothing. Uh, camera wasn't on me when I was... Put your hands down, goddammit. Not gonna do it. The second delay was apparently so Overkill could help The Walking Dead reach its full potential, which really Ooh. makes you wonder, since the game we got doesn't even live up to what was announced 18 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was more like 55 years ago. Sorry. Overkill wanted The Walking Dead to have this deep character lore with exclusive storylines and be ultra replayable based on a dynamic level system. But we didn't see any of that in our time playing, <laughs> aside from characters having their own abilities and loadouts, which is not anything new. The voice acting and animations and cutscenes genuinely are really good, though. Yeah. Uh, sound is good, too, and they certainly put more effort into the narrative than Valve did with Left 4 Dead. Still, how did Overkill's The Walking Dead end up being sort of messy with very little hype. After playing the game, it really feels like investors made the game's publishers and partners focus on other projects and cut Overkill's budget and resources. Yeah, The Walking Dead might be worth your time when it drops in price, but for now, don't be surprised if you aren't hearing much about it. Speaking of hearing, Omar, it's time to patch through our lucky caller. Hello, you're on the line with Gaming Weekly. You know, we don't have this. We don't have a phone. Omar, are you there? Hello? Did he say, did Omar say hello? <laughs> was he pretending to be a caller? You can't win, Omar. No, that was in the terms of service. No, you definitely cannot win. That's, that it for this, that's it for this week's episode of Gaming Weekly. We're done. We will see you all next week. Bye. I kind of agree. Like, I, I didn't think it was fantastic because there was a lot of shit that I had already played that I, you know, but, but that's coming from people who go to conventions a lot, right? Sure. Imagine if that's the only one that you go to in a year. You probably have a great time. Like, we're probably a little bit jaded about it because I've been to a million conventions. They're all holes with video game posters. Adam? Jaded? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not jaded. I, 